It's now 23 minutes past eight and it seems that when Boris Johnson emerged from a few days of COVID isolation yesterday and appeared before the cameras, he made things worse. It was after that interview in which he said nobody told me what we were doing was against the rules that reports emerged of fresh moves amid his newest MPs. Laura Koonsberg, our political editor, joins us now. What are you hearing, Laura? Good morning, Michelle. Well, do you remember last week we talked about the generational split in the Tory party, that those who've been elected more recently are less willing to forgive Boris Johnson's mistakes of the last few weeks? Well, that's boiled over into a series of meetings in the last few days. And we first reported on yesterday afternoon what's been dubbed the pork pie plot by an irritated member of the cabinet. Now, it might sound something slightly comic, but it is very serious. We found out that a group of 2019 MPs, about 20 of them, have been discussing the notion of submitting their secret letters to try to trigger a leadership contest to remove the Prime Minister. They were discussing doing that this afternoon after Prime Minister's questions. But once that news was out there, there was, as you might expect, some pretty angry pushback. What some of that group see is insulting quotes about them, calling them idiots, branding them fools. Um, Last night, some of them received calls or summons from Johnson loyalists. One of them told me this morning they were told if they didn't back down, well, then they might lose their seat under changes to constituency boundaries. And as a result of that, in the last 10 minutes or so, I've been told that about half of the group have actually submitted their letters to try to oust Boris Johnson this morning. Now, there's no official response to that. um, But the wider question is how many other dominoes may may then fall? Mm, Indeed. And also because it seems that there are now more people who are not prepared to wait for the Sue Gray report. Well, yes. So in the last week or so, government ministers, the prime minister, have been repeatedly saying pleading with people basically to wait for the official verdict. The Sue Gray report you mentioned is the official inquiry being carried out by a senior civil servant into exactly what was going on in Downing Street in government departments during the pandemic and the extent to which events or drinks gatherings may or may not have broken the rules. But some of this younger generation, not necessarily in age, but in terms of time in Parliament, seem to have just lost patience with this. Now, let's take a breath, though. A big part of the Tory leadership process is shrouded in secrecy. So anyone who this morning purports to tell you with certainty what is going to happen should be treated with very healthy scepticism. But it is possible that the number of letters hits the threshold required of 54 in the next couple of days. That's 15% of Tory MPs who are required to put in letters to Sir Graham Brady, the boss of the backbenches, to trigger a contest. It is also possible that the numbers may be miles off. You know, one government source said they've, they've all gone mad. There are other MPs who still do want to wait to see what that official verdict is on the shenanigans in number 10. Um, A minister pointed out to me this morning, it has always, always taken longer to reach the, the magic number, the threshold where the Conservatives actually get into a vote of confidence in any leader. But another kind of wider political point, which makes this all very hard to read, is that there's no one plot You know, do you remember when we talked all the time during the darkest days for Theresa May? Broadly, the Conservatives were split in two. There were clear ringleaders on both sides, Brexiteers on one, Remainers on the other. But this time it's a real circus. So you've got the group of grumpy 29 MPs, 2019 MPs, not all of them. You've got some very unhappy Scottish MPs. You've got frustrated Brexiteers. You've got a gang of former ministers who never liked Boris Johnson in the first place. You've got some still active supporters of the prime minister. But the complexity of that picture makes it very hard to read. And as one source said to me this morning, it's a sort of mirror of the coalition that the 2019 Conservative general election victory spanned that was always going to be hard to keep together. That also makes it very hard for number 10 to control or to predict Whatever happens, though, in the next 24 to 48 hours, the consensus that's building inside the Conservative Party is that as every day goes by, Boris Johnson is less likely to be leading them to the next general election unless he, sometimes a political Houdini, can pull off his biggest ever miracle comeback. So much at stake. We'll see him at Prime Minister's Questions later today, of course. Laura, thank you very much. And we'll be joined by a government minister in a few minutes' time.